This presentation will examine the central limit theorem and how it can be used to determine various probabilities. So here's our example. We want x to be a uniform distribution defined on the interval from 0 to 30. We want to select random samples of size 50 from this set. And we want to find the probability that the mean of the sample is more than 18. A couple things to notice. A uniform distribution is not normal. It is not bell-shaped. But we are taking samples of size 50. That is a large sample. We define anything larger than 30 as a large sample. If that's the case, we know from the central limit theorem that the means will tend to follow a normal distribution. So we can use normal distribution properties to determine this probability. So our samples come from size 50, so we want our n to be 50, and we are looking for the probability that the mean is more than 18. So here's our two facts. n is 50, and we're looking for the probability that x bar is greater than 18. So we have a uniform 0, 30. We need to know something about that distribution. What is the mean and what is the variance? What is the standard deviation? If it's uniform 0 to 30, we would expect the mean or the expected number to be halfway in between. Let's see if that's what happens here. We're going to run 10 million numbers in C1. They are come from a uniform 0, 30 data set, and we're going to look at the descriptive statistics there to see how it behaves. So we get a mean of our 10 million numbers to be 15.001. We expected the mean to be 15, so we feel pretty good about that. And our standard deviation is 8.661. These numbers are both statistics. We really need parameters. But the fact of the matter is, n is so large with 10 million that our statistics should be fairly close representatives of the parameters. So using that information, I'm going to claim that the mean of a 0, 30 is about 15, and the standard deviation of 0, 30 is about 8.66. But that's not what we want. We want to go ahead and get the mean and the standard deviation for a set of averages for x bar. So we are going to say mu sub x is 15, sigma sub x is 8.66, and we want n to be 50. The central limit theorem tells us that the x-bars will tend to follow a normal distribution. It also tells us something about the mean and the standard deviation of those x-bars. So what do we know? We know the mean of the x-bars will be the same as the underlying mean, the mean of the x's, which in this case will be 15. And the standard deviation of the x-bars will be the underlying standard deviation divided by the square root of n, 8.66 divided by root 50, or about 1.2247. So these represent the mean and the standard deviation for the distribution of averages for x bar. And what we're looking for is the probability that that x bar is greater than 18. To answer that question, we are going to need to convert the x bar into a z-score. How are we going to do that? Well, x bar greater than 18, we want to turn x bar into a z, so we're going to subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation of x bar. So from 18, we're going to subtract the mean of x bar, subtract 15, divided by the standard deviation of x bar, 1.2247. So the probability that x bar is greater than 18 will be the probability of z, x bar minus mu of x bar divided by sigma of x bar will be z, is greater than 2.445. Now, How are we going to determine that probability? We're going to jump to our applet, and we're going to determine the probability by looking at the value that comes from the applet. So we're going to go to 2.445, and we want the area to the right of that z-score. So 2.445 is here. It's a little itty-bitty shaded area, or about 0.00724. So my probability that x bar is greater than 18 is about 0 0.00724. Now can we check this? Is there some way for us to do that? We are going to do that with a Minitab simulation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have 100,000 numbers, C1 through C50, coming from a uniform 0, 30 distribution. Our mean says take the mean of the rows and put them into C51. So I'm going to have 100,000 averages. Each average is computed from those 50 numbers. 
So the averages are in C51, and then I want to put them in order in C52. So from that, we want to see what the results will be. So there's our syntax, random 100,000 C1 through C50, uniform 0, 30. Our mean C1 through C50 into C51, sort C51, C52. So let's look at C51 and C52 if we can. So C51 is a column of averages, and C52 are sorted in order. We want the probability x bar is greater than 18. So we're going to look in our chart here to see how many of these numbers in C52 are greater than 18. So scrolling through the list, we see 99,322 are under 18. So how many more would that leave us? That would leave... 678 out of how many? Out of 100,000? Or 0 0.00678. So to recap, we had 99,322 that were under 18. So 678 number were over 18. So of those averages. So the probability X bar is greater than 18 is about 678 over 100,000, 00678. Pretty close to our expected number of 00724. Okay, our next question we're going to say in a certain population, heights of women are normally distributed with a mean of 64 and a standard deviation of 3. If 20 women are selected at random, what is the probability that the mean height will be between 62 and 65 and a half inches? So we've got to ask ourselves, is it fair to use the central limit theorem? We're only using an n of 20, and typically we've said that the n had to be large to use the central limit theorem. But the underlying data set here is normal. In that case, it is fair to use the central limit theorem for any value of n. So here we go. We have a mean of 64, standard deviation of 3, and n of 20. Mean of x bar is the same as mean of x, which is 64. Standard deviation of x bar, underlining standard deviation divided by root n, or 0 0.6708. And we want to get the probability that x bar is between 62 and 65.5. We're going to want to convert that into a z. So subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. Subtract the mean of x bar, 64, divided by the standard deviation of x bar, 6708. And this will give me the probability that z is between negative 2.98 and 2.24. And we will answer that by going to our applet to see what that probability will be. So we have negative 2.98 and 2.24. We want the area between those. And what does the applet give us? It tells us it's about 0 0.98601. So our probability that the x bar, that the mean is between 62 and 65.5, is about 0 0.9860. So I would like to again do a mini tab simulation check. I'm going to put 10,000 numbers in columns 1 through column 20. These come from a normal 64 3 distribution. The mean of 64 standard deviation is 3. Our mean C1 through C20 put in C21. So C21 is a column of averages. Sort. C21, C22, and C22, they will be in order from lowest to highest. And we want to find out how many of our averages, what portion of our averages are between 62 and 65 and a half. So we are looking for the probability x bar is between 62 and 65 and a half. I have my averages in C22 in order. So I'm going to look to see how many are more than 62 and also less than 65 and a half. More than 62 starts here, and I'm going to scroll down until I get the last one less than 65 and a half. 63. 64. Notice the number of rows is there. 65. Went a little bit too fast there. 
create and we have a total of 9848 rows so we get 9848 out of 10,000 which is about 0.9848 So our Minitab simulation gives us about 0.9848, whereas our theoretical answer gave us 9860. Those answers are very close. And this concludes this lesson.